how to give Pharaoh to? Willie, you said it doesn't matter, but you're giving a counter argument. <laughs> Yeah, we we don't have time for this. Okay. 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 Uh, communications done. All right. So next up in our presentation will be group dynamics. You have your communication script. Well, that's not what I said, Tony. Check, check, check. One, two, three. All right. Do you want to open this? Am I introducing everyone? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Everyone here? Our topic. Oh. Uh, Oh. Who's my name? Oh. So, group. Diversity is here first, but group roles is up there first. Okay, so our we're group dynamics, and I'm Hunter Marsh. I'm Maddie Ives. I'm Juan Mercedes. So our first category under group dynamics was group roles. Um, our first activity was the straw game, which is where each student will get a role, which the other students don't know, and they must build a tower of straws and tape in ten minutes while acting out their role at the same time. Um, these roles will be things such as the facilitator or blocker or things like that. Um, so our next category of diversity, we have the dots game. Um, the goal of this is to demonstrate that we often limit our perspective and choices. So we're gonna pass out a copy of Connect the Dots and ask the students to complete the directions that are at the bottom. They'll get about five minutes to work on it, and at the end, they will be asked if they have found the solution. Um, the goal of this is to discuss afterwards why most of us don't go out of our boundaries and why we have different perspectives. Okay, so the goal of this is to ultimately define diversity and why we need diversity in the world and to do many things with our, and uh, I'm gonna have to polish that, okay. Um, so the next activity would be build a baseball team. <coughs> Some of you have heard of the workshop bomb shelter, where you're given multiple people and you have to choose which ones go in your bomb shelter or not. This is a little spin on it with baseball players. So you'll get different baseball players from history with different problems and different skill sets that the kids will have to choose in order to make a diverse and successful baseball team. The, so the next um, portion of the group dynamics workshop is group development. Yeah. And so um, in order to start, we're going to um, watch movie clips of different stages of group development. And in order to, to portray proper group development, um, we're going to watch movie clips from movies such as um, Remembering the Titans and Being the Alphas, all of good movies that show proper stages of group development. And then after that, we're going to um, properly define the stages. The part, uh, we're going to properly def um, define the stages of group development, which are forming, growing, norming, performing, and absor absorbing. And, and to the next piece. OK, so um, next up after group dynamics, we have leadership identity. I don't think you, five minutes per slide, that's getting talked to death. What a terrible way to die. <laughs> Hi, my name is Cecilia Wood, and our next workshop is Leadership Identity. So this workshop focuses on the characteristics of leadership. Our objectives are to define leadership and various types of leaders, to reflect on the leaders that have influenced the scholar-athletes' lives, and to determine their personal leadership identity. 
To start off this workshop, we will play a game called Find the Leader. For reference, the directions to the game are listed under um, Leadership Identity. This provides a starting point to identify what a leader is and also works some of the scholar athletes' energy out so they can focus on the workshop. Hi, my name is Hannah San Sebastian. Um, in this workshop, we will also be defining leadership and what it means to be a leader. Um, rather than give the scholar athletes a dictionary definition, we will have them create their own definition um, by brainstorming using the snowball method where they write down their ideas and crumple up a piece of paper and throw it at the front of the room. That way we're keeping the kids active and also generating ideas. Um, next, we will be um, thinking about leaders that they know in their own lives, in their home, in their schools, and um, famous people to kind of go with our second objective. Um, we will also be discussing how leaders can use their power and responsibility for good and evil by discussing the dangers of a dictatorship and also why it's important to use your um, power responsibly. <coughs> Hi, good afternoon. My name is Dominique. Um, one of our main goals incorporated into the curriculum was to, um, ties back to our objective to help the students determine the types of leaders they are um, and where they stand in their community, especially because one thing that was shared with us during our visit to the academy was that many of the scholar athletes are natural leaders, but they're just not aware of that yet. So, um, oh God. Okay. so we decided to incorporate a simple yet effective personality test for the students to participate in. And this um, includes questions such as, um, I raise my hand a lot during class, I enjoy leading a discussion with my friends, just things for them to reflect upon. And this will help them observe where they fall as leaders and become more aware of how their strengths can help them achieve their overall goals. Thank you, Leadership Identity. Our next group is Countering Adversity. Guys! Hey! Good to go? We good? All right. So I'm, I'm Tanner, and I'm a part of the Countering Adversity group. And some objectives we wanted to accomplish with this workshop are defining adversity, identifying examples in our lives and the children's, developing solutions to adverse situations, and identifying techniques for dealing with adversity in the kids' lives and our own. Um, first, we wanted to help the kids understand what adversity is. A definition we found was an unfavorable fortune or fate, a condition marked by misfortune, calamity, or distress. Now, this may be a bit wordy for the children, so a new definition at the teacher's discretion would be recommended. Hello, my name's Radhika Golup. So once the, kid, once the kids have defined adversity, they will be using teamwork to combat difficulty in a real life um, human not situation. Through this game, they'll have to work together and hold hands and then untangle themselves and by A, using no people talking, then only having one person talking, and C, having as many people talking up to the teacher's discretion. This will be combating adversity because the kids will have to work together, but at the same time remain calm and solve the problem at hand. The next thing they'll be doing is experiencing a zombie apocalypse. So for this, it's crucial that the kids re um, end up with a single consensus that they will have to reach as a whole group. So some of the dilemmas that they will be facing include choosing whether they want to go to the store or the gas station, considering both the distance and the cost. And another thing they have to decide is if they want a metal pole to self-defend themselves or if they want a first aid kit to heal their friends. So this will complete the workshop's second ob objective of developing solutions to adverse situations. Um, finally, we will be teaching the students strategies to deal with the adversity that they face in their everyday lives. The most important thing for students to do first is to step away from the situation and breathe in order to um, avoid a violent confrontation or acting rashly. Next, we will be making sure they identify the root of the problem since oftentimes um, the actual 
issue is not fully understood. And finally, we will find we will give the students um, strategies to implement a solution to the problem. For example, seeking out support or breaking the problem into parts. Through these workshops, we hope the scholar athletes can recognize what leadership looks like, take advantage of their natural leadership skills, and then combat adversity in a healthy way. Okay, thank you very much. Our final presentation, final part of our presentation is decision making. The final workshop in our presentation, thank you Maddie, is decision making. What'd you say? Is there, there's a conclusion. Yeah. Cool. If you guys want to do that, then sure. Huh? Yeah, go, you, you can. Yeah, um, and I'll, in I'll introduce you for the conclusion. I just figured since I was doing all the, all the transitions. All right. So, yep, lit. Can I talk? I'm not going to say here's the conclusion. So, effective decision making is. Introduce the people. Hmm? Yeah, introduce yourself. Oh, hi, I'm Kiersey Arneson. Effective decision making is an essential skill on and off the field. In this workshop, students will learn skills for making decisions individually and in a group. To do this, um, students will uh, identify steps of individual and group decision making models, apply decision making models to personal and group situations. Identify challenges that arise from making decisions and evaluate the pros and cons of various decision making models based on different situations. Our workshop uh, covers a few different decision making processes. First is pro versus con, and we uh, demonstrate the decision making process of pro and con uh, through a marker race with pro and con charts. We then have a group decision-making model activity where each group is given a decision that needs to be made and they as a group have to use one of three different decision-making processes uh, to reach a decision collectively. And then finally we have an individual decision-making model flowchart for the students to utilize in a personal decision that they have to make in their lives. You can see the flow chart we have on the last page of the curriculum guide. Okay, thank you very much. Now we will have now we will have Radhika up to wrap up our presentation. Yeah, I was about to say that too. So like, you have your group of activities and then you have your group. I don't think we need that. We can. I can just go on. I think if there's any kind of group, it can just walk up and then we can just go through the time. Yeah. Word. Okay. So especially as the group grows, we can have like maybe one arm group. Their arm is there, his arm is there. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit up here the whole time. Yeah. 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 This seems okay. weird if I'm just getting up from the front row. Okay. Okay. So. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the conclusion of our presentation. We sincerely hope you can implement these ideas into the Nationals Youth Baseball Academy and other community initiatives that you may be leading. By learning self-awareness, communication, group dynamics, leadership identity, how to counter adversity, and finally decision making, we hope the scholar athletes will develop character and leadership skills. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Was that was that good, guys? Shorter, Wait, longer? Oh. Good. Yeah. Um, Sorry, can you and then also be like, if you have any questions. Oh, true. So should I do question and answer? Okay, so open the floor up to questions because we're gonna be doing the game during the presentation. So are we really? Okay. Wait. I have, okay. We have to discuss that. Do we want to do the demonstration that we decided?
Yeah. We can explain the games a little better, but I don't think demonstrations are necessary. I don't even think we need to explain the games better. Like, everyone seemed to explain the game as much as you needed right now. Yeah, so I th- Yeah, it's in I I feel like we got And they're going to have questions afterwards, hopefully. So Okay, questions. I don't want to be the only one up here, first of all. <laughs> the problem is we Yeah, we can have like a panel. <laughs> Julia. 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 I'm just taking it right now. I have a question. Did everyone say the objectives? Did, like, everyone said the objectives, yes? Yeah. I know they wanted us to say objectives. Okay. I also, I had another suggestion. Instead of us talking back and forth, it would be a good idea if we could line up here. So if your group is next, like, stand here and then exit this way. So instead of, like, talking back and forth, we have to sit in chairs and everything. I don't know. We have to, like, sit together. So then everyone sit on this side, right? We don't have to sit on the front row. Because if anyone else splits and we get only focused on the activities that we can do on the day for the week, and we could pretty much like talk about any of the activities. Yeah. Isn't there one more slide after this? No. So it's not really important. Yeah. You guys are just all It's just, it's just like, 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 I think it's fine the way it is. Like, it's the objectives. It's like the objectives are written differently. So like, do you, like, we need to include at least a couple of the, um, activities. So do you want to do like one activity for each, or do you want us to talk about I feel like if I like said Just that don't put your phone in the view of like the like camera. Put like your phone behind the podium. Okay. Okay, so so Okay, so Okay, Everyone quiet down. Please quiet down. Okay. Juan is speaking and taking the mic off of me. So, um, do you guys think it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good idea to do like a panel sort of thing where, at the end, if you have questions, yeah. um, one person from each group. Okay. So choose that one person. Choose that one person. Yeah, I guess I do. Um, I believe the uh, that the idea that we came up with like this is just a moment ago is that when there's a question, someone just take initiative, stand up and right. answer. That's what I, mean. I thought you meant like come up to the front. Yeah, I know. Like, okay, sure. Right. Cool, cool. Like, yeah, but no one wants that person has a worse answer than an other person, so we can change that. Okay, but sure. do you okay, well, one person no, we have to do okay. like you guys just because like one person is standing. Yeah. Okay, but do, um, do you want the mic on them to give them a sis like on, on the live stream or does it matter? Hey, can I interrupt for a second? Yes, um, quick, I guess, suggestion, because I know y'all expect both of the screens to work and they didn't. Um, I know you guys had plans to put the curriculum guide up here so that you could like scroll along. At least that was what I was told. So instead of doing that, do you think you could put the curriculum guide in a Google Doc and we could probably maybe put it in the description of the live stream link so like people could like click in from their phone okay. and see the guide and go along with you? Yeah. So it's like at the top you want to write it? <coughs> it? Oh yeah, it is a Google Doc. Yeah. Yeah. Maddie shared it with me, so I'll be I'll be good. I'm gonna. 
Yeah. No, just do link sharing. Can we just copy of it and then share? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A lot of people. One question. Take the doc that they gave you and make a copy of it and share that. Yes. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah
communication with demonstrating clean and not touching. Mm. Group yes, there were definitely people from like your attorney group. I mean, I I mean, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. But but we counted. If you also have your lanyards on, take them off. Oh, yeah. Don't have your lanyards on up here. You can. So when I get up and say, like, Welcome. Okay, yeah, so like Just a reminder for those watching at home. Exactly. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Maddie, beautiful Chestertown, Maryland. My name is Marissa Teddy. We are excited to have you all Maddie, at the Maddie, College Maddie, Maddie, for our 2016 ALS Pride Month. First off, I would like Talking to give you. you a little background about us. We're a Maryland like an infomercial dial 1 800 555. Okay. 
Staffers, how are you doing today? Thank you, Sterling. Thank you, Libby and Danny. So what I'm going to I say thank you and good. So so now we will be going to the Q&A session. Um all right, so here's what I was going to do. Since we have to do questions after every slide, I was going to let them do questions and then you come up with a conclusion and then I'm y either one of us it doesn't really matter just say here, now And my mom. Hi, mom. Hello, Nia. I love you, mom. Hey, mom. Love you, mom. My mom's watching right now. Guys, are we doing another dry run? Mike, are you tired? Thank you everyone for tuning in. We will be starting at three o'clock. Also, if anyone wants to refer to the um, curriculum, I have it on my computer up here.
Mm-hmm. What's that glass mean? Touch it. Your glasses? Just say good afternoon. Oh, it's right here. Two fingers. Okay. Hi, Chase. Hi, Chase. <laughs> Hello, Chase. Welcome. Remember him? No. Is he the old person? He was a staff there. He was staff. Okay, so how dare you go? How dare you go? Is that your stuff as well? Hey, where are we sitting? Where are we sitting, Zach? Um, guys, where are we sitting, Mr. Zach? Someone's Thank bag. Whose who's bag is that? Okay, so wait, where are we sitting, <laughs> Mr. Zach? Okay. <laughs> Everybody on the panel can hear us. Hmm? Everybody who's on the panel now can hear us and see us. Is everybody ready? We will be just a few minutes before we begin. This turned off. This was, I saw this. Oh. It's bad. We apologize for the delay. We're trying to connect and like get this working again, but our stuff is messed up. Can I refresh it maybe? Or no? No. I feel like Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to beautiful Chestertown, Maryland. My name is Marissa Teddy. We are excited to have you at Washington College for our 2016 ALS practicum. First off, I would like to give you a little background about us for those who may not know. We are Maryland Leadership's Advanced Leadership Seminar. For the past week, we have been working towards creating a cur curriculum for the Washington Nationals Youth Baseball Academy's 6th through 8th grade program. We believe we have a really neat product for you here today. Hello, I'm Madeline Harris, and the focus of our curriculum is around what we MLW know best, leadership. At MLW, we hope to instill core leadership values in young people, and that is the basis of our project here today. We have plenty of workshops for you filled with objectives that will enrich the lives of the kids. We have dedicated to we have decided to put our enrichment hour over a six day period. So without further ado, here's our presentation. 
This table shows the basics of the current schedule that will be implemented into our program. So from 3.30 to 4, the kids arrive and have snacks. At 4, they have study hall with high school volunteers and tutors. At 5, the kids play baseball or softball for an hour. Then at 6, they have enrichment. On Tuesdays and Wednesdays, the enrichment hour is used as a mentoring session similar to, similar to our tuning. The kids get support, academic help, and set goals. On Thursdays, if this plan were in implemented, the kids would have a leadership workshop just like ours during the hour. We wrote lesson plans for each of these workshops to best integrate elements of MLW and will briefly explain each. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen tuning in at home, I would like to point out that we have the link to our curriculum guide in the description to this YouTube video. And it is also on the screen right here. Now we would like to welcome up our group on self-awareness to present their workshop. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lauren Parker. Self-awareness is our first enrichment workshop. We hope our several hands-on activities will help educate the, educate the students on how to focus on their own individual strengths and leadership styles. Hello, I'm Dulce Bot. The DISC personality test will require the students to choose one out of a list of four that best describes the one category that they most identify with. These four categories reflect dominance, influence, conscientiousness, and st uh, steadiness. In doing so, they will learn more about how their minds work, including how, um, their goals, interests, and motivations. Hi, I'm Julia wright -Sellis. Um So in the collage, the students will be given um, a large piece of paper, and in the center, they can um, write their name, which would have, which would have, which with the um, arts and crafts that are provided to them. And then around their name, um, they'll be given magazines and they can cut out um, clips of things that they feel describes them, um, their favorite foods, what their families do, um, things like that. Um, and at the end, they can compare it with their peers and kind of see how they're unique um, and their strengths and differences um, with the other kids in the class. Thank you, Julia. My name is Omar Rodriguez, and another activity within the curriculum is a mask project. Here, students will create a mask that on the exterior of the mask, they describe who they want people to view the mask, and on the inside is who they truly are. In doing this, students can exercise self-awareness and open up to their peers. Hello, my name is Brandon Hill, and I will be explaining the Pathways activity. Pathways in, is an activity where attendees will travel through a flowchart in order to determine how each of them prefers to work. The flowchart is available on page four of your curriculum guide. The activity will ask them questions such as, when you work on a pr project, do you prefer to dive right in or plan it out first? And if you worry more about the process it takes to complete a project or the end product, thus making them more self-aware. Hi, I'm Ari Guthrie, and the last um, workshop we have for self-awareness is Leadership Types with Myers-Briggs. Um, in Leadership Types with Myers-Briggs, students are split into large groups, and they are given a series of four statements such as, go to the left if you prefer to focus on the external world, or go to the right if you prefer to focus on the internal world. When they go to the side that they believe fits them best, they'll pick up a sticky note with the corresponding Myers-Briggs letter. After they have all four Myers-Briggs letters, they will take a seat and um, view a list of all the Myers-Briggs types with descriptions of every type and their strengths. Doing this will help them be more self-aware of their personal leadership style and their personal strengths. Thank you so much. And now we will be moving into our communication workshop. Do not forget that the link to our curriculum guide is in the description of this video. Hi, 
I'm Jasmine Scott. I'm Rija Calva. Hi, I'm Trent Shetler. And we focused on the communication aspect of the workshop. Um, so the communication enrichment class is meant to show students the importance of using communication in all situations and displaying the benefits of this skill in a personalized and nuanced fashion. Students will experience various concepts that relate to communication in the everyday world. So we know that you guys wanted to focus on character development and communication is a big part of that. If you turn to the communication page in your curriculum handout, you can see that the communication course objectives are focused, clear cut, and thoughtfully crafted. Students will be able to one, define communication and the various types of communication, two, understand the importance of effective communication, three, identify the methods and mediums of communication, and lastly, give constructive criticism using the given feedback methods. We stress emphasis on the topic of communication as it is a vital skill to develop and carry in the conduct of a leader, student, colleague, and any other role. There are many instances when the students will be dealing with different audiences and need different types of communication to do so effectively. Another key element of communication lessons, the communication lessons, are the topic of giving and receiving feedback. Because forming constructive criticism is something that all of us struggle with, we incorporated several simple and highly effective processes that students will practice executing with their peers. So because we're dealing with younger kids, we didn't want to just make boring, monotonous le lessons. So we tried to incorporate as many games and interactive um, activities as possible. So just because there is some terminology that we have to get down when doing um, leadership workshop, uh, we have fun ways for the kids to use color paper and whatever arts and crafts materials to define terms and they can match up in groups. Um, then we will talk about giving examples of mediums of communication, which is another fun way for the students to look into the media that they deal with every day, like movies that they deal with, and finding examples of effective communication and ineffective, ineffective communication in the media. Um, and then they will work to identify with groups um, mediums of communication, oh sorry, um, work to identify positive communication and negative communication. And then we have games such as the human knot, which um, is a very fun game that can be applied for many top topics of leadership. But basically they'll um, do the same activity with in two manners, one where they're allowed to talk and one where they're not. And I don't know if any of you have heard of this before, but um, the kids get together holding each other's hands in kind of a human knot and they have to get out like into a normal circle. Uh, without talking and then with talking and that will emphasize how communication makes things a lot easier. Communication is vital to express any idea and the students in your academy will greatly benefit from this class. Thank you very much and if there are any questions feel free to ask. Also if there are any questions for the previous workshop please feel free to ask. And don't forget, for ladies and gentlemen tuning in at home, there is the link to our full curriculum guide in the description of this video. Hearing no questions, I would like to move on to our group dynamics workshop. So, um, for group dynamics, students will be able to learn the importance of diversity in groups. They will understand the various group roles and how to implement them, and know how groups develop and how we can use group development stages. So the first topic is group roles, which Juan will explain. I'm more Maddie. Um, Maddie will explain. Yes. Hi, I'm Maddie. Um, so for our group roles topic, we were thinking that we would first define all of the group roles, such as the facilitator, blocker, and many others. And then the kids could play the straw game, which is where 
there's groups of five or six, and each of the kids in the group gets one group roll, and they have to act out that group roll while they build a straw tower that the straw can shoot for 10 minutes. Um, the next topic of diversity, we will first play the connect the dots game. The goal of this is to demonstrate that we often limit our perspective and choices. So we will pass out a, do a copy of the dots game and ask the students <coughs> to complete the directions at the bottom. They'll have about five minutes to work on this and at the end we will ask if anyone has found a solution. Um, after the dots game is over, we can discuss why it is that most of us don't think about going outside the boundaries of the box and that they had to draw outside of the line and this is what is required of us when we interact with others. Okay, so another goal is to define diversity and why we need diversity. Diversity is important because we need to understand and embrace everyone's differences in order to ensure a brighter future. So another way we can work to improve diversity is a baseball team game. Some of you may have heard of the bomb shelter game, which is a workshop where uh, you're supposed to pick people in a wor in a, to go into your bomb shelter and they have various races and backgrounds that you have to decide if that's good for your uh, bomb shelter or not. So to tune it to the Washington Nationals Youth Baseball Academy, we have decided to build a baseball team. So we will use various players from history with different backgrounds and skill sets to decide if they are good enough for your baseball team with different backgrounds varying from Sandy Koufax, who is Jewish, and Roberto Clemente, who is Puerto Rican. So um, the next topic we'll be talking about under group, group dynamics is group development. So um, basically, um, what we'll have the students, students do, watch, we'll ha they will be watching clips from various movies, such as Remembering the Titans and Angels in the Outfield. Um, so basically movies that portray the stages of group development. And then afterwards, we'll have the students um, be clearly given the um, stages of group development such as forming, storming, norming, performing, and adoring. And so from that, the students can get, can learn how to work in groups and at what stages they're in in their current groups. And so if there are any questions, um, we'll take them now. Ladies and gentlemen who are just tuning in at home, I'm oh sorry, I see a question in the back. Never mind. So ladies and gentlemen who are just tuning in at home, Please do not forget that there is a link to our curriculum guide, our full curriculum guide, in the description of this video. And without further ado, our next group will be Leadership Identity. Hi, my name is Cecilia Wood, and our next workshop is Leadership Identity. This workshop focuses on the characteristics of leadership. Our objectives are to define leadership and various types of leaders, to reflect on leaders that have influenced the scholar athletes' lives, and determine their personal leadership identities. To start off with this workshop, we will play a game called Find the Leader. For reference, the directions to the game are listed under leadership identity in our curriculum. This provides a starting point for identifying what a leader is, and also works some of the scholar athletes' energy out so they can focus on the other parts of our workshop. Hi, my name is Hannah San Sebastian, and I will be talking about how we will be defining leadership for the students. So rather than give the students um, a dictionary definition of what it means to be a leader, we will have them brainstorm their own definition, and we'll have them do this using a technique called the snowball, where they write their ideas down on a piece of paper, crumple it up, and throw it into the front of the room. And that way they're um, generating ideas, but they're also maintaining, like, main, ma remaining active. Um, after we define leadership, we're going to talk about leaders in their own communities, at their school, at home, and even celebrities that they may have heard of. And finally, we will discuss the importance of using the power of leadership um, wisely, um, talking about dictators and how we want to avoid that, and making sure that they're responsible with their leadership. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dominique Clay. Um, one of our main goals incorporated into the curriculum ties back to our objective to help the students determine the types of leaders they are 
and where they stand in their communities, especially because something that was shared with us during our visit to the academy was that many of the scholar athletes are natural leaders, but they're not aware of that just yet. So we decided to incorporate a simple yet effective um, personality test, um, which consists of questions such as, um, I raise my hand a lot during class, or I enjoy leading discussions, um, just to help them observe where they fall as leaders and what their strengths are, and they become more aware of their strengths and how they can achieve their overall goals that they've set. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, so seeing no questions, we will move on to Countering Adversity. And please do not forget that the link to our <laughs> the link to our full curriculum guide is in the description of this video. All right, my name is Tanner Morris. I'm going to be listing the objectives of this workshop. So our first objective is to define adversity and identify examples in our lives and the lives of children. We also help hope to develop solutions to adverse situations and identify techniques for dealing with adversity in the kids' lives and our own. We wanted to start by defining what adversity was. A definition we found is an unfavorable fortune or fate, a condition marked by misfortune, calamity, or distress. Now this seems a bit wordy, so a definition that the teacher comes up with is recommended. Good afternoon, my name is Rudik Argola. So after the first activity in which the scholar athletes must de define adversity, they have to practice combating diversity by using teamwork and playing the game human not. So as mentioned in a previous workshop, in this game, the children must link arms and then try to untangle themselves. The especially the difficult part about this is that they have to try with either no people talking, having only one person talk, and then having multiple people talking, and then seeing how this contributes to the, how they can um, overcome adversity. After this, they will be experiencing the game of a zombie apocalypse, which will be led by the teacher. The especially difficult part of this game would be that they have to reach a single group consensus. Despite the fact that they have many decisions to make, for example, whether they choose to go to the store or the gas station to get the resources they need, considering they have to consider the cost and the distance they need to travel, or whether they want to get a metal pole to defend themselves, or if they want a first aid kit to prevent any injuries or heal anyone that may be injured. So in general, it's very, they have to discuss this and really brainstorm and figure out the pros and cons and then successfully um, overcome this adversity. This will especially help to um, complete the workshop's second objective of developing solutions to adverse situations. So of course, um, everyone in their life experiences adverse situations. And what we want to do is work with the scholar athletes on how they can combat and deal with the adversity. Um, the first strategy we want them to use is to step away from the situation and breathe. Um, it's often easy for everyone, especially younger kids, to act rashly when they first um, encounter a situation. Um, next, we want them to identify the root of the issue that they're facing because oftentimes um, the students might blow things out of proportion, so we want to make sure they understand exactly what's going on. And finally, we would work with them on how to implement a solution, um, countering the adversity they're facing. For example, using past experience, um, seeking out the support of an adult or peer, um, breaking up the problem into smaller parts, looking for positive aspects of any problem, and testing out multiple solutions to the problem. We hope that the scholar athletes can recognize what leadership looks like, take advantage of their natural leadership, and learn to fight adversity in a healthy way using these workshops. Are there any questions? Thank you, and now we'll be moving on to our last, but certainly not least, workshop, decision making. Hi, my name is Kiersey Arneson. My name is Jordan Best. <coughs> and my name is Will Anderson. Effective decision making is an essential skill on and off the field. In this workshop, students will learn skills for making decisions individually and in a group. To do this, students will identify steps of individual and group decision making models, apply decision making models to personal and group decisions, 
identify challenges that will arise in making decisions, and they will also evaluate the pros and cons of various decision making models based on different situations. Our workshop uh, has a few activities to go over different ways that decisions can be made. To begin with, we uh, look at the pro-con technique, weighing the pros and cons of a decision. Uh, for that activity, we, are, we have planned a marker race. A marker race is where there are two teams, each with one marker and a large piece of uh, flip chart paper on either wall. And the goal is to be the team that can fill up their flip chart paper uh, with pros and cons of a decision first. Uh, next, we go over group decision-making models. For this activity, we separate the class into four groups, and each group is given a different hard decision that they have to make. They have to make this decision either through consensus, compromise, or voting. Uh, and then finally, we are going to give each student a decision-making model flowchart, which can be seen on the last page of our curriculum. The decision-making flowchart uh, will be used with a personal decision that the students have to make and is a time for individual reflection on what they've learned throughout the course of the workshop. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. That, is, that concludes our workshop presentation, but now we will be moving into our closing remarks. So, Sadika, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the conclusion of our presentation. We sincerely hope you can implement these ideas into the Nationals Youth Baseball Academy program or other community initiatives that you may be leading. By learning self-awareness, communication, group dynamics, leadership identity, countering adversity, and decision-making process, we hope the scholar-athletes will better develop their character and leadership skills and then apply these skills in their daily lives. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And one more time for those tuning in at home, the link to our curriculum guide is in the description of this video. Now, are there any questions? Well, um, one thing that we thought about or that we considered, um, her question was about um, us. We went to go meet the kids at the National Youth Baseball as no, Academy, excuse me, and she asked how this affected our decisions for making this curriculum. Um, one way it affected our decisions is that um, we were talking to um, one of the girls, her name was Blue. Um, she informed us about um, different curriculums or different things that she thought would be important to learn and things that she thought should be emphasized more. So we considered that when we were choosing which workshops to do. Any more questions? Um, she, um, one, the question that was asked was, how can this, um, 
Most of the kids have been coming to the National U, uh, the Nationals Youth Baseball Academy since um, they were very young. And so she wants to know how, how can, therefore, how can we uh, implement how can this curriculum be implemented for years to come, not just for this year, this coming year, but for multiple years? So um, my answer to that is um, basically this, this is a framework that can be implemented across, across many, many platforms. And it, it also has um, space for, um, for um, current, like basically current, current leadership skills to be implemented into that. And so, and also to um, build on the ones that they already have. And so we could develop leaders and as well as create new ones. So I feel like this curriculum is perfect for students that have been, that have been going to the, to the academy since they were young because of the fact that they could build on the, the leadership skills that they previously had in, in, the, um, in the group and as well as build new ones. Thank you. Next question. Oh, um, I would just like to add to that, that a lot of the games and activities that we chose to implement in our curriculum are things that you can gain something new from every time that you play one of those games. Um, a lot of the delegates here at MLW have been doing this for years, and we keep coming back because there's something new to be gained every time. And a lot of them are team-based activities, and every team is different, and when you work with different people, you are able to gain different skills from that. And so I feel like the activities that we have are universal. They'll be relevant for them for years to come. Okay, so now we move into our next question. Something that really stuck out to me that I'm probably going to be talking about forever is I was talking to this one little boy named Jaden. Um, we were just talking about school and his life, and at one point I asked him if he thought he wanted to go to college, and he said, you know, no way, you know, I'm not going to college. So I kind of asked him, you know, why not, talking about what college really is and what it means for your future. Um, after we talked for a few minutes, he decided he wants to go to college and study math. And like for me, that was just so amazing to hear that regardless of whether or not he does go to college, that I was able to kind of open that as a possibility in his life and hopefully impact his future. And I sincerely hope that if this um, curriculum is implemented and he's able to develop as a leader and as a person and as a thinker, um, that would be able to help him in his future and all of the scholar athletes in their futures as well. So um, when, when we were in, um, in the classroom um, eating lunch with the kids, uh, we were, me, and, me and another um, delegate were talking to one student named, named Sean. And um, he, was, he was just sitting down and he was, he was, we were asking him what he liked, what he didn't like about school and stuff. And he said that he, he loved, like that he actually loved, the, loved to learn and he loved to learn new things. And, he, and, uh, and as well, I asked him like, who, who were your favorite teachers? And he said, I love all my coaches and I love all my teachers there. And so like that really stuck with me that saying that this, pro um, this program really is making a difference. And I just wanted to help with that and help them give them new skills so they can continue on in their life and make a difference in the world. What uh, stuck with me is that you, you see these kids that are obviously in a rougher part of town and I talked to a few kids, and every one of them, I asked the same question, like, what do you, what do you love about school and, and the Nationals Baseball Academy? And they, they love to learn. And it's really heartwarming to me that they have a desire to learn, and they want to be here every day. They want to be in an environment where they have baseball and learning. And it really, it's really cool how they use baseball as an outlet also to, as also as a vehicle to learn. It's it's absolutely amazing to me.
do you decide which concepts to teach and which ones not? I mean, for example, like, I've known my minor since, like, a year, but I'm still, like, teaching her French and music, even though I have a lot of French stuff going on, so there's a very, like, higher order of skills that, you know, I'm curious to see, like, how would you guys decide to pick these, and how would you fill them so that it would fit the eighth grade student and fit sort of the French they had done or something? Well, I know for me, we uh, I was thinking about doing the bomb shelter activity, which is a little little too much for our middle school audience because it, it was a little too much when I did it at a fall leadership conference for Maryland Association of Student Councils for some kids. So that's why I switched it up and put it into baseball team because it's something they can understand. I think also, as you were saying, like the Myers-Briggs test like, could be too like complicated for middle schoolers. And like, even if um, it's not like exactly like the like right type for them, I think it'll give them like an idea and at least get them thinking about it. So even if they take it again in two years and they have a completely different Myers-Briggs type, like that's okay. Like it's just like it opens your mind to like thinking about what kind of person you are and what your strengths are. If you have anything to add, could you please form a line on this wall? <laughs> um, I would like to go back to what I was saying before and how um, these are things that they can do for years and years afterwards. Um, things like the self-awareness thing, I feel like are, is especially important because that's going to change over time. And knowing where you are to begin with is going to help you move forward. Um, and a lot of the games that we chose, we chose specifically for this. Um, we felt like they would get the kids up and like get them active and moving around. And from our trip to the academy, that seemed like something that really resonated with our audience. Um, and we chose a lot of the activities because we felt like they would be fun, but they could still get the lesson from that and be able to start their foundations with that. To add on to what Tulsi said, um, a lot of our games have helped break down these complex ideas that even some of us today can still learn from. So for example, um, in helping with the Meyer Briggs test, there was um, one wall would be like introvert and one wall would be extrovert. So that way it would be much more simplified and it would be easier to understand and break down. And then I think building off of, I forget who said it, but um, building off of ideas so that that way as they grow older, they can start to understand the more complex ideas rather than being hit with it all at once. All right, time for your next question. I see the hand in the back. Um, I believe that with this curriculum, um, you can kind of interpret it to apply it to many different levels. I mean, looking through it, I think that most of these things could honestly be applied to high schoolers, even in the advanced camp. So I think that with sixth graders, you might have to water things down a little bit, whereas with eighth graders, you could possibly be, um, get more in depth, especially with the diversity issue or adversity. But I think that our curriculum is broad enough and has enough options that it would be okay for pretty much any age group. While Radhika is walking up, I believe our curriculum is more open to interpretation and it can be interpreted in a number of ways, a number for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Another thing is that all of the workshops have time for discussion and this discussion is vastly gonna change from what age level and what maturity the students are. So if you're in sixth grade, you may not be dwelling too much on the diversity issue, but then if you're in eighth grade, you're gonna have a lot more to contribute and a lot more to learn. So that's a big thing that even though these uh, workshops may be the same, the level of how deep you go into it and how far you analyze and discuss it and really teach the kids about these issues that they're gonna face every day in their lives, that really makes a difference. Okay, uh, any more questions? So I know one of the things that we had talked about in class and I think that was uh, really important for this year is uh, curriculum guides are very easy to implement. So if I have kids who know nothing about leadership and I bring them in 
to deliver a lesson, won't be able to do that with little to no effect. So I was curious, what kinds of things did you guys do to make sure that that was possible? <laughs> well, um, the question that was asked is, how can the uh, how can teachers or a, r a random person that doesn't know about leadership or hasn't taken a leadership class before can uh, pick up the um, curriculum and just teach it to the kids um, at, to the full effect as somebody who already has experience in leadership? So, what um, basically the curriculum is detailed is very detailed and to the point, and it has uh, instructions for each game, instructions for for the 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 discussions that, that will be taking place during during the curriculum. And so teachers can, t of course, take that to, the, to their consideration and do implement it in their own teaching style. But it's, to the, uh, it's detailed enough that they know what they're doing, even though they haven't may, may have not taken a leadership class or may have not be um, well versed in leadership. Thank you. Do you have a curriculum, Zach, in front of you? Sure. Um, so I've been in uh, Chase's position, if he was the one <laughs> <laughs> doing this before. I've, I've had workshop outlines given to me that I've needed to implement. And I think that, um, that these, that our six workshops for the most part have been written in a way that's very concise and to the point so that um, you can leave it open to interpretation for the teacher so it's easy for the teacher to have flexibility with the workshop uh, but still know what, what the workshop's asking them to do. And I think that one of the struggles for us in making this was uh, trying to find that balance between maintaining flexibility uh, but still maintaining clarity too. And I think that we, I know I personally spent a lot of time thinking about how to best do that and I think that we did um, an at least adequate job so that <laughs> someone could pick it up and run with it. I echo Will's sentiment. Uh, Will yesterday had my computer for both lunch and dinner doing work on his workshop to make it flexible yet concise. And I believe our workshops are very much in tune for the chases of the world. <laughs> we all started out as chases. While Cece's walking up, I think it would obviously need help with forming their definition of adversity, but they would probably know struggles in their life. Being from the 7th and 8th wards of D.C., they know what struggles are, and we would just have to help them along with defining adversity and how to confront adversity. Um, I'm fairly sure that included in our curriculum is a just um, dictionary definition of adversity. So the teacher um, could give out the dictionary definition and then ask the students what it means to them. Because I'm sure, like, um, like he was saying, that um, students, they've um, experienced adversity before, but they haven't experienced it in a way that they say, okay, this was hard and that is adversity. I think just generally bridging together, they have understood what it is they just need help identifying it. So with the teacher giving them a definition and giving a few examples perhaps, then the students could identify adversity that they've gone through. All right, thank you, Cece. Uh, do we have another question? Um, how would you guys, uh, when I was listening to the curriculum guide um, on communication with uh, participants, uh, they mentioned in the presentation How would one go about making it uh, based on the presentation? Like high percentage communication and low percentage communication. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, so because there are so many different forms of communication and communication in a professional environment and a you know, casual environment, I think finding where you communicate best helps with character development. Um, and also just knowing what your strength is with communication. You know, knowing if you are a better communicator with certain audiences. So, um, so basically, um, uh, adding on to what um, Richard said, uh, these, the, the communication workshops can be interpreted in many ways. And one way that just spe specifically we had in mind for it to be in incorporated is on the field. And so, like, um, there's communication is, is essential in, the spo in any sport you play. So basically, um, we, uh, um, the, class, the classes and the workshops that we, we will, um, we will be imp that could be implemented could show up in the, f could help them identify times where they're communicating on the field as well as in the classroom. And also, that, uh, from that, we can identify who's a good communicator and like which ways that they are good co at communicating in order to build their character and build how, how they work in groups, how they work by themselves, and how they work in the classroom. The way you communicate really shows part your character because, for an example, if you're out on the field and you're going for a fly ball and there's a guy who says, oh, I got it, and there's a guy like, I got it. Like, that communicates, like, how you are as a person. So teaching proper communication will also help develop a uh, good character. You have a question in the back? Well, um, I believe that part of it is our baseball connection also with that. Um, we are also catering to a slightly different audience. We, instead of catering to just middle schoolers, we're catering to middle schoolers in Southeast DC, which is obviously a lower socioeconomic area and there are problems in that area and we were there the other day and we saw the students so this really caters to them and yes um, in addition to the um, unique audience we this curriculum is also written for the students by the students so we have all been going to MLW for many years some of us have like three years under our belt some of us just did ALS but either way we really understand how this process works and what we benefit the most from so we are really um, synthesizing what we believe will be the best for them to learn and then putting it in a style that we think either worked when we were their age or that we wish we had had access to when we were their age. Thank you. Um, are there any more questions? to manage frustration <laughs> <laughs> this um this project we um did it over the over the whole week and from the first day um we ha we kind of struggled a little bit because um we had we hadn't set defined goals and we had to we had to we we were taught these things but we weren't actually implemented implementing them from the start and so we slowly but surely picked up kind of we 
he surely but slowly started a goal set, started to um, implement leadership skills into our own process. And that for, therefore, we began to um, produce more and led to our final product. Going off of what Lauren Juan just said about um, how we're learning, still learning, even as we learn, we can now start getting into it. So we, on the first day, we try to do like big groups and we try to like figure it out, and then we kind of, kind of found out how smaller groups kind of work better for us and kind of got we're more productive. And in one of our workshops, it was on um, pathways, I think it was, and there was like a tree and how we wanted to work on projects. And we kind of figured out how most of us would like to work alone more than like to work with others. So we kind of like put the pieces together and how we figured out how um, us like not being able to work in a big group at all was kind of because of most of us like to work alone more than we like to work with others. Um, I would like to say that the product may be good, adequate, hopefully it works for you, but the process was definitely long and hard. So it was a lot of trial and error. The first days especially, it was a lot of group big discussion, really getting our ideas out. Everyone wanted to share what they wanted and it was a lot, of, everyone had good ideas, but there was definitely problems hearing what everyone wanted to say. Just because you're the loudest doesn't mean you have the best ideas. Everyone wants to contribute, but it was really about finding the happy balance between everyone's ideas, how we're gonna implement those ideas, and really what's gonna work. Uh, one of the biggest things about our process was we spent um, the couple of days that we had before visiting the academy, we wanted to, we were confused like what meant by this curriculum um, if you aren't aware practicum is a lot about us just get being given the prompt and we just have to start and do something with it so when we started we were unsure and then we had okay let's why don't we do a part for stem why don't we do a part for humanities a part for leadership and a part for health and we got to the academy and we realized they already had all this so if we did it again it would just be rewriting something and not really giving something that hopefully you guys can actually use so when we came back from the academy I would have to say we actually had to erase our plans and start over because we realized that we need to get something that we wanted something to be useful to you but not something that you're like we've already done this so we came back and decided that we do we need to do something about leadership and character development because that's definitely something that we thought the kids would um, the scholar athletes would definitely be able to use and implement in their own lives so when we came back we looked at like a previous speaker said we looked at what we had liked what we wanted to learn what we wanted to give them and then from there we really started redoing it really thinking it through changing how we're uh, working together from big groups to smaller groups really narrowing it down and then presenting this product um there were days during practicum that after practicum someone like Mehran or Libby would be like what'd you think of practicum and it'd be like leave it at the door <laughs> so it was definitely a long and frustrating process but I'm really happy with how the final product turned out um, I know definitely I got frustrated a lot and some other people got frustrated but at the end of the day we all came together we put together what I think personally is a wonderful product and you know everyone here is like family so I really enjoyed it okay so I have a question for you guys knowing that you guys work with middle schoolers a lot of the time more often than we do do you have any feedback for what we put together today Putting on the spot. <laughs> um, so I can say, first of all, you're all hired. <laughs> and you know, I definitely love what you guys have put together here. Uh, this is not an easy task. And I think when somebody had said, like, with practicum, you're just you're given a prompt and you go, that's how working in the nonprofit world works. I'm sure Anita can agree with me. You're given a prompt and you go. You have to figure it out. And so um, the fact that you guys really put together something that's so wonderful in such a short period of time is really fantastic. So um, I think what I really liked about it was the level of um, interactivity that's worked out worked throughout the curriculum. I know that somebody talked about at the beginning. Um, I'm sure uh, Shanika and Kelly can tell you that our kids need those opportunities to work together, to talk, to use their hands, to get up and to move around. Um, so seeing that work throughout it, uh, seeing that work throughout it 
is, is really wonderful. And like the new activities as well. I, you know, I've, I've done MLW once or twice, and so <laughs> like seeing things that I've never heard of before was really exciting for me. Um, I think in terms of feedback that I want to share, I definitely love the presentation, and whoever handed me the curriculum guide, thank you so much. Because the whole time I was like, I wonder what this looks like. I wonder if everyone would be mad if I pull out my phone during this and look at it. Um, but no, looking through it, it was great. For those uh, of you at home. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't at home, so I was um, I think one thing that I'd point out is um, at the beginning of the week, uh, when we talked on the phone, on the phone, and um, at the very end of the call, I gave my Miran all of my information. I said, if anybody wants to call me or email me or ask me any questions, here's my information. Feel free to. And I definitely waited. I didn't get a phone call except from him. <laughs> it's not great. So um, definitely thinking about it, like there was a lot of resources at your disposal. So uh, you could talk to me. You could be in touch with other people who work for the program. Um, there's definitely a lot of resources at your disposal. So while while you were having those conversations of, is this going to work? Is this the best fit? Is that there were people out there that you could ask, who would have given you kind of their advice? Um, I know MSEL just got here today, um, but Shanika has been to the program and has seen the kids in action before. Kelly has as well. Um, Anita has been there before, and so. Um, But what I'm saying is that there are people around you and there are people that you can connect with that you can have those questions answered. Like, when we're working on a project, we use any and all resources that we have at our disposal. Um, whether it's somebody that is working right next to us or somebody that we have to find a way to get in touch with. And so, definitely don't be afraid to do that. Especially if somebody's asking to create something for them, make sure that you are doing whatever you can to kind of check all the boxes. And that being said, I think this is wonderful. I love it. I definitely look forward to, um, you know, kind of taking it and sharing it with our coaches and giving them some new ideas on how they can, you know, start to teach leadership to our kids. Thank you. I had to make I had to make it up. Um, something else that you can that I would that I would share is that um, I know one thing that we emphasized at the beginning is that this is something that would probably be implemented by coaches who have some training and volunteers who have little to no training. And so I know you guys were thinking about like making it concise versus giving too much detail and. That's like definitely a clear, a clear thing you have to do in terms of the content, but in terms of the resources and like directions that you provide, you can never overdo it. Because you're gonna have people on their very first day who are gonna like try to pick this up and just read off the page to kids. And so providing them with talking points and questions to ask and, and things that they can use to go deeper and deeper kind of goes back to Shanika's point of how do you make it level for different groups, um, but kind of gives you an opportunity to work in that flexibility because you want people to take this and, and interpret it and feel like they can kind of make it their own, but you don't want people to take it and make it their own to the point where it's no longer the thing you have intended for them. 
And so that's definitely something to consider. And you can do that by just giving people almost more than what they ask for. And trust me, I understand you guys have had like two hours of sleep a night for the last week, I'm sure, and eating the wonderful food that's here. Um, and so it's definitely a struggle, but as you move forward, it's definitely something to consider is that um, when, you're, when you're building out a product, you can definitely, you can't overdo the amount of, of resources that you provide, especially to somebody who's brand new to it. The more support and structure that you provide, the more that you're sure that your original intention is gonna follow through. Um, thank you for your questions. Thank you for your feedback. We appreciate you all being here. Thank you for all you watching, and that's all the time we have for today. Link in the description.